Ah, hey fellas, it's me again. And if you watched my final P61 video, you'll notice this is a new sweatshirt. But anyway, uh, this is going to be a about a 30 minute video uh, for those interested in how I build my bases or make my bases for uh, my in-flight aircraft. Um, not much to say about it other than what's in the video, so I hope you enjoy it. All right, the first step that I like to do is I want to choose the size of my base. Now I've got a couple different sizes here. This is the one I typically use for my 30 second scale plane. Uh, I forgot exactly what the measurements are. Uh, this one looks to be nine by, uh, nine by 12 just about. <clears throat> This one's a lot larger, as you can see. Uh, so, so my first step is just figuring out which one I want to use. Now, if I use this one, I think it's just going to be too big. Uh, some models, I mean, this may be, you may be able to put like a bigger plane, like the B-17 on, on something like this, but I think it's just going to be too big. This one may be a little bit too small, but, but my idea is I don't want to, I don't want the base to be the focus of the model. I just want it to be an accent, and I think this will work perfectly. <clears throat> now, my next step is to decide where I want my posts. And for my posts, I use these clear acrylic rods, or perspex, whatever you want to call them, uh, these clear acrylic rods. Uh, and since I'm probably going to be using two, now I've thought about this a lot, where I want to put it. Now, in some cases, I've drilled a hole right through the center. Uh, I usually find the, the center of, of uh, the balancing point, which in this one, it's going to be way back here. So if I was going to drill something, it'd have to be up in here, and it's going to get interfere in with, with the, uh, the inside of the, the radio area. <clears throat> so I can't do that. And uh, I've got a lot of panels down here, and, and, and basically I just don't think it would be enough to support without having built the uh, structure inside to hold the post. So I'm going to make a cradle. So my plan is take my perspex or my acrylic rod, drill two holes, and I've already figured out that I'm gonna place the cradle, one right here and one back here. And that's gonna, that's gonna give it enough support to hold it, I think. <laughs> I've already tried it out on something else and I, and I think that'll, that'll hold it. And I don't wanna just put it right here, that looks boring, so I'm gonna angle it. So I know I'm gonna put my, my cradles here and here, I'm gonna have two of them, and then that should give me a little leeway if I wanna tilt it a little bit or whatever. So I'm gonna use my thicker 3 8 inch acrylic rod I'm going to I'm going to drill two holes in my wood, one right here, one right here at an angle. <clears throat> I'm going to take my thinner acrylic rod and I'm going to bend it with a heat gun and then set it down in here. And basically I'm just going to I'm going to take my uh my Dremel tool and route out like a little circular area right here and then inset this in and glue it in after I bend it. So Let's start out by finding the center of the center of the base. And I just do that simply by making an X from corner to corner. Okay, now I got my center. Now I know that where I want my cradles are gonna be five and a half inches apart. So from here to here is five and a half inches. So I'm gonna center this on the base how I want it. And I'm basically gonna put the center line of the fuselage right along this, this diagonal. So I'm gonna roughly mark how I think this will look the best. 
I'm gonna mark basically right here and right here. So it'll be basically sitting up about eight inches high right about here. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna, since I know it's five and a half inches, I'm gonna line this up about where I had it. I'm gonna mark here and there. And then that gives me my five and a half inches. And it's pretty well centered, but you know, it just depends on how you want your plane to sit. Then I'm going to just hit it with a pilot hole. Then I'll take my 3 8 inch drill bit. and drill my holes. Now I don't want to drill all the way through. I want to drill almost right to the edge. I want to drill almost all the way through, but not quite. All right, now I've already cut out two acrylic rods to length, and I've got these about eight inches high. And then I've rounded one end to kind of mate with the, the holes that I've made. And it's kind of a tight fit, which is good. This wood will stretch out a little bit once you get them in, but you want them tight. You definitely don't want them loose. Okay. Now, when I bend these, they're going to sit right up here and form a cradle. And then this is going to be the height of my plane right here. So it's basically going to sit like this, which I think is going to be perfect. So that's how I do that part. I'm going to grab the... Uh, the heat gun and start melting some acrylic rod. Okay, now I'm gonna make the cradles <clears throat> and it's pretty simple. I've got a couple of experimental pieces that I used uh, 3 8 I think it was 3 8 inch acrylic rod and I got them curved to the shape where they would fit. They would fit the, uh, the parts of the plane where they're gonna be uh, located. And I think I'm going to go with the smaller, I forgot what size this was, but it's a little bit smaller for the actual cradle part. And it's simple. All you got to do is find an object, and I've got this little thing my daughter had out there, to help me bend it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun. And the key is to get it... Uh, keep it moving. Don't keep it on one spot or it'll bubble up. And you'll know when it gets uh, gets to the point where it can bend because it'll start. If you've ever if you have ever heated up sprue to stretch sprue, you'll know when it starts to heat up because it'll start to bend. And this is the same way. You can see the air it's starting to bend. Okay. Now it'll stay hot for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and bend this around. And this is basically just to get the Get the form. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to heat this up a little bit more. It's kind of wonky. So you just have to play with it. Keep heating it and, and molding it. And you want an even heat throughout the bin. Otherwise, it's going to bend easier in some spot and you're going to get a deformity like I got. You want it even. And this stays hot for a while. If you want, you can you can get a cup of water and dip it in the water to cool it real fast. I haven't had any problems with cracking when I do that, but I guess I would guess that there would be a potential for cracking if you. But I haven't had it happen. I'm just going to heat this one side up right here. Try to. Bend it in shape. I'm just going to keep working it. Okay, it's not perfect, but I think that will do. Then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to cut off because I don't I don't want these to really stand out real tall, but I do want it um, high enough on the bottom of the plane to where uh, it 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 won't fall off. So I'll probably cut them off around here, and I may adjust. Just keep in mind once you cut it off, if you cut too much off, then you got to start over. So that's how I bend it. Then what I'll do is I'll take. I'll take this part and I'll uh, I'll kind of grind this just a little bit, just enough to break the to to rough it up, and then I've got my my other acrylic rod, and I've already <clears throat> dremeled a notch, kind of like a notch in here, and then I'll take some five minute epoxy and epoxy it in, and it should be strong enough to hold it. So this is going to be the side for the smaller one and then I'm going to make a bigger one for the uh, for the front side of the plane right there so I'm going to make one just like this only smaller all right and that's how I that's how I bend my acrylic rod all right I've got the base I what I did it's been about a day is I stained the sides of the base and then overcoated it with a clear lacquer did a couple coats now what I'm going to do is tape off the stained portion and then spray paint it with a base white. And that way, I'm going to use the white because I'm going to do like a, a partial American flag on here. But uh, just about any time I do these, I'll use white as a base coat just because uh, it's, it's a good primer coat and I can lay any color down on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this off and uh, get it sprayed. All right, fellas, I've got the the base painted white, and of course I taped it all off so I don't uh, paint over the stain part. I've got my acrylic rods all bent, and I use two-part epoxy to secure them. See, I got two. This is going to be the front. I had to do a little bit more manipulating to get this to uh, get the plane to sit right. But before I start painting the plane and before I start painting the base, 
I'm just gonna test fit, and I've already done this, so I know it fits well, but just to show you. And you kinda wanna get all this done before you start throwing paint on it. Just in case something screwed up and you don't wanna waste all your time painting. So, the plane will fit on here. Let's see if we can zoom out. And it's pretty light, I, because I left a lot of a lot of parts out. I mean, this is a pretty light. It's actually pretty light for what it is. And then the plane will fit on here just like this. And you can move it and tilt it. And I think that will work out perfectly. So what my plan is, is to paint the base like an American flag. Uh, and basically the stars and bars, or the, the, uh, the stars right here, and then kind of have it at an angle. I think it's best to, uh, when you can, to, to offset things at an angle. It just looks, to me, it looks more pleasing to the eye, rather than just have a, a big American flag here. I think it's kind of cool to angle it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's going to be the next step, but I am going to get to painting this. And while I'm waiting for clear coats and paints to dry, then I'll tackle putting the American flag artwork on, on the base. So that's where I'm at. Alrighty. So I've got my base coat down. And uh, that was the, I got the, the white spray paint on the back. And uh, laid down the mask that cover all the white part. And then sprayed... The blue and red and now I'm ready to start weathering it and what I'm gonna do first I'll do this off camera so you don't need to see me spraying spray paint I'm gonna take some uh, dark yellow really diluted and mist it over the top until I get a uh, nice yellowing because I want it to look old and weathered so that's gonna be the, the first step and the reason I do this first is because I'm going to add some sponge effects and some darker colors around the edge. And uh, I don't want that part to be uh, dulled down with the yellow. So I'm going to yellow it up and then we'll come back. Okay, I've got this yellowed. Now I'm going to take a dark do a dark gray and I'm gonna do just a little bit of of sponge work on this thing just to kind of give it a little extra like it's maybe moldy or and I want it to be light let's see if I can get a so, you may hear my kid yelling in the background. She's kind of being a brat. All right. I'm just going to just hit it. Maybe switch it around. Maybe just kind of keep this on this side. Maybe concentrate, switch my sponge. I kind of like this one better. Gives me a Okay, and that's gonna give me just a little, just a little something. Okay, now next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some, some brown and I'm gonna kinda spray some brown 
uh, kind of brown the edges. And then I'm going to come in with some NATO black and hit the very edges so it kind of goes from black to brown. So that's what I'm doing next. Alrighty, as you can see, I've got it yellowed. I took the brown and I sprayed it in. I sprayed it straight across so I could get it kind of like merging into the center. Then I mixed some, um, just some black that I had left over in some pipettes with the brown and then darken the edges. And now for the final step, before I clear coat it, is I'm going to mix some water, regular H2O. Whoa, that's a little too much. And some of this um, Dr. Bombay's India ink sepia. And this is so easy that I'm going to employ my 10 year old who's been a brat lately to uh, help out. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so I'm going to have her do it. Just mix it up with the water. Now, Kylie, what I want you to do is just slather it on there. Oh no. No, no, slap it. <laughs> Just kind of put it on here like this. Oh. <laughs> and let it run. Okay? Guess it doesn't matter. Here, let's get a bigger brush. Let's get... Let's dip this thing in here. And just kind of get it on there, just like that. And let it go where it wants, because what happens with this India ink in the water is... Uh, it doesn't really adhere, it just kind of goes where it wants. So let's just pour some on here. And just kind of move it around a little bit. You don't have to press so hard. <laughs> just make sure it's all covered. Okay. And we'll just kind of let that pool up and then that'll go where it wants and it gives it a nice little maybe drop a little bit in there to darken up some areas I like the look of that now when that dries it's going to dry almost like a, if you wanted, I guess you could take a cup, like a Coke can. Okay, that's enough. Thank you, Kylie. You could probably take a Coke can and put it on there and make a little mark, like a coffee stain or whatever. I don't know that I like it there in the center, but maybe put it over here or something. Looks kind of cool. Now I'm going to let this dry and it's going to kind of pool up and, and hopefully dry all funky. And, uh, yep, yeah, there's Kylie. <laughs> so, I'll let this dry, and then uh, when we come back, we'll have it, hopefully it'll look cool, and I'll put a flat coat on it, and we'll be done. So, I've got the, uh, the ink is dried, and I put a flat protective coat over top, so we're all finished on the top. I peeled my tape back, and you can see the nice demarcation line between the... Uh, stained wood and the painted surface. <clears throat> I sound like a real crafter, don't I? Now what I want to do to give it a little more professional touch <clears throat> is I'm going to use some some of this Craft Bond spray adhesive and I'm going to glue some felt onto the bottom and uh, so I'm just going to spray it And I usually use Loctite for this, but I'm kind of running out of Loctite. So we're gonna see if this works. So I'm just gonna spray both surfaces. I'll let this tack up a bit. Loctite is a little more messy. Oh, wow, look at that, stuck to my finger. Interesting. All right, it looks like that's gonna work pretty good. I'm just gonna take it 
and set it on here. And I'm gonna get a book, a heavy book, or books, and kind of clamp that down. A couple of U of I yearbooks. I'm gonna let that set up for a, uh, I'll probably leave that on there a couple hours. Uh, that's usually, that usually works. And then what I'll do is I'll come along and trim with an X-Acto blade the edges and uh, we should be good to go.